If you've ever eaten at a Chinese joint, there's a good chance you've tried Santre Bear. Or would it work with fish instead? Big shout out and a thank you to Loon Maid as well for letting me use his timber guns. These things are beautiful. I'll add a link to his Instagram down below. So here's the dry edge setup. I like to just hang the fish in the fridge with plenty of airflow around them. And you'll notice that this fish is all shiny and doesn't really have the normal kingfish colors that we love. I actually scaled it using a Japanese technique called sukibiki. With a sharp knife, you can cut the scales off rather than scraping them. Doing this leaves the skin intact on the meat and removes all the scale pockets that are usually left behind when you scrape the scales off, meaning you don't have these little pockets for moisture and bacteria to build up in. I always like to begin by removing the head and wings off a fish. It gets rid of a lot of the bulk on your chopping board and opens up way more space for you to work. And a sharp knife makes a world of difference here. Even a heavy knife just to cleave through that last bit of spine and maybe you won't send the head for six like I did. So I'm gonna break the wings through the middle and then we're gonna store them for later. If you're up for something a little different, I definitely recommend giving the throat a try. Super fatty, super gelatinous. I really like to just chuck them under the grill with a little bit of oil, get a nice little crispy crust on them. You can cut it out of the lower jaw, separate it from the gill plates, and then you're left with the tongue and throat meat. Filleting as if we would any other fish like this, we're gonna open up the top of the body along the spine and then roll the meat away from the bones with your hand and run the knife along the spine. Work your way through the fillet until just the rib bones are left connected and then push your knife through those rib bones. We'll repeat for the other side. And there's plenty of meat left amongst the spine here. So we can use this in our mince later on and let's scrape it out with a spoon. And now for this rib rack. I did quickly show it in a previous video as well. And I'll make a proper video working on this cut soon. So we're gonna slide our knife under the rib bones about halfway along their length. Slice up towards the pin bones, separating the top half of the ribs. And now slice straight down through the belly and through to the other side, through the skin and all. Find your last rib bone and cut down to the edge of the fillet. And then we're gonna cut out the thin sinewy meat between the bones and then you've got your rack. So then to finish prepping these fillets ready for some mincing, we're just gonna cut the bloodlines out and then cut the pin bones out as well with that. And lastly, a super important step when cooking or making plans with fish, especially kingfish, is to cut off a chunk and cook it off. We're checking for kudoa, a microscopic parasite that while harmless to humans, will turn cooked meat into a mushy paste. This one was beautiful though. So let's get some ginger, probably a knob about the size of half of your thumb. Peel that and set it aside, and you can chop it or grate it later, depending on how you're feeling. Take a couple cloves of garlic, and give them a chop. 
Then we got some shiitake mushrooms. You can use them fresh, but they can be really expensive where I am. So these canned ones are gonna do just fine. Water chestnuts. I actually never tried these before, so it's a pretty new and pretty interesting thing. Uh, not a whole lot of flavor in these canned ones. I'm expecting that just because they're canned. Um, but what they do add is a very mild sweetness and a nice crunch, kind of like a crunchy pear. I like using what we call cos hearts or gem lettuce. They're nice small leaves that also have some flex to them. If you go just your normal cos, it seems to crack and break. It doesn't really seem to work as well. And let's bring the heat. I like to cut the seeds out of the chili because we're not the biggest fans of uh, blow your ring out spice, but you do you boo. I like to slice it up thin. This is gonna go on top later, so we don't want them too thick and too much of a mouthful. And then for that sauce. So we've got five tablespoons of water, two and a half teaspoons of corn flour, one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce, four tablespoons of oyster sauce, two teaspoons of sesame oil, four tablespoons of cooking wine, and then a little mix and mix. So skin your meat, cube your meat, and then we're gonna grind it. I managed to get this grinder for like 50 bucks on Facebook Marketplace, but if you can't get one, there's plenty of cheap manual options online. Otherwise, you can try mincing it with a knife real fine. So let's bang some ghee or other cooking oil in the pan and get it smoking hot. Drop in your garlic and grated or chopped ginger, depending on how you were feeling. Get it fragrant and drop your mince on top. Gotta make sure the pan's staying super hot here so we can get some color on this mince without it sweating in the pan, letting go of all of its juices. And then once the mince has browned, it should only be a couple of minutes, so you can pour your sauce in and start to cook it off. We're gonna mix so everything's coated and then allow it to reduce, get nice and sticky, nice and thick. Let's add the shiitake and water chestnuts once that sauce has thickened and we'll stir them through. Let's arrange the lettuce cups and spoon that mix in. We're gonna to top it with some spring onions, some chopped or crushed peanuts, and chili, and some sesame seeds. Black ones bring plenty of color to the plate and it's a nice contrast there. And there we have it, that is kingfish sanchoy bao. You could have told me that's chicken in there and I would have believed you. Even for those who maybe are not the biggest fans of seafood and fish, this one I think would go down a treat.